Hey, Ronnie. Oh, you're on mute. How nice to see you at the HRC meeting. Yes, it is Good nice role. to nice to be the staff liaison. Oh, <laughs> Different role. <right. laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're smiling. You're looking happy. So I'm assuming all's going well. Yeah. So it's a uh, week six for me. It's it's good to for me to be reminded of how early on it is. Just because um you know uh, having done stuff with the town, it is very much I had a wealth of knowledge coming in, but also stuff that I didn't know. So it's really good to put things into perspective in that way that I'm still learning my role. Mm -hmm. Good to Great. see. Well, you've seen. Yes. Hey, Deb. Hey, Deborah. So, Deb, you're on the agenda again, but I think because it was copied from the previous agenda, you don't have to say anything. Well, we also That's voted right. on it. It's done. Yeah, yeah, it's all finished. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, it, so. <laughs> I saw it. I meant to tell you, Philip, but Not it's a problem, been a rough month, so I didn't uh, get to you. And then I saw it again this morning and thought, oh, well, it's already posted. Right. It's simple enough for you all to decide that it's done and no need to mm -hmm. conversate about it. Mm -hmm. God, I hope we have a quorum today. I haven't heard otherwise. No one's reached out that they will not be in attendance today. Is Liz still on the commission or has she already stepped down? Liz Haywood. She's still on. Good. And Tyler? Tyler's off. He's gone. He's off. He's not on. Yeah, because he's graduated. He's gone. Oh. He's tormented. No, that's what yeah. I meant. That he yeah. be graduated, so he cycled off. We really need new people. I thought that after this meeting, now that I'm catching up on things, that I would write a note to... Um, the town manager saying that we need, I know we have at least one applicant. Mm -hmm. There must be more that I don't know about. And oh, he's good. a good applicant. So, oh, good. you know, it's time to do the interviews. Yeah. That is on an update that I have. So that there is oh, progress okay. on that. Good. So now that you're here, I guess um, Pamela won't be here. Um, she will come every now and then. Right now we're doing, um, our because we are Department of Two, a split off. So I'm on the gear and she is currently a, a resource fair for UMass for off student, um, off student campus um, resource fair. So uh, Cress is there as well as our public health and other resources for students. So really just trying to get out the department's name and so we're dividing and conquering as much as we can <laughs> i just want to show you before any public members of the public arrive what i'm wearing i hope you can oh actually you're not the only one that's so funny because i have a good friend who had a t-shirt made exactly <laughs> like that well not exactly <laughs> like yours but the same idea yeah um, and then la yeah i have not been so excited in a long time and i'm also um I don't know if you know this about me, but I can be um, both anxious and compulsive. And so I'm looking at the poll information like three times a day in case like something new comes yeah. in. <laughs> it's new for me. I never used to track the polls the way I'm polling tracking now. I'm checking multiple times a day on the New York yeah. Times, just the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I'm horrified that we still, um, there's still uncertainty. It is horrifying that that more than um you know some rando what five percent random wackos are supporting his ticket is uh is really demoralizing actually. Mm -hmm. Let it get to me. Here's Liz. Liz. Mm -hmm. On the dot. Hi, Liz. Hi, Liz. Hello. Hello. Oh, there you are. Good to see you. We we're just wondering if we're going to have a quorum. I think we should. Well, I guess not. Because what? We'll, well have to wait for a few minutes. It's just yeah. six o'clock. It's so. just six. Let's wait. Did people think 6.30? Because the last meeting we had was at 6.30. You know, I wondered about that. 
Last meeting you all had, you all said six o'clock. So that's why I scheduled it for six, but I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> right, I was about to say, but that does not mean that people remembered that, but all the messaging that is out there. But the messaging says six uh, yeah. and there's a lot of it. So let's wait. Oh, that's good. I, I don't get some of the reminders since I set up the meeting. It doesn't let me know. So I'm like, I hope it's telling you all an hour before and a day before. No, that's what it's scheduled for. Do you, um, Liz, are your summers slower because schools are out for the summer? Or are you running around refereeing and doing your due anyway? Oh, so I was doing UMass basketball that were in hockey, which would start next month. But after 25 years, I told them that last year would be my last. Oh. Um, however... One of the reasons why I did that and one of the reasons why I am um, pulling back from the HRC as well is because I am um, doing more with USATF. I am on the Affirmative Development um, Committee for um, Conduct and Accountability and um, I'm a voting delegate for um, USATF New England. So um, normally, if I was doing basketball, which I'm not in hockey, which I'm not, September would be my slow month. And so would April. And April is only my slow month because I refuse to do high school in April because it's too damn cold. Um, yeah. the, um, now that I'm not doing basketball and track, um, basketball, I do have cross country to do, but I'm only doing um, mostly on the weekends for cross country, so it frees me up. And since I'm not doing basketball, I'm right now um, a full time substitute, a full time staff member of the high school. So I've been working there every day. Um, we have not determined. On for, uh, how long that's going to last. It will not last past October 31st at my decision. Mm -hmm. um, they are in the process of hiring somebody in my position and hopefully that comes sooner rather than later. So again, I will I go off and running at the end of November. I stay off and running until the end of March. Um, uh, April is a slow month. And then in May, I go from May through the middle of August. You are still living a very, very full life. <laughs> uh, it's my second career. We'll see what happens with it. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we now have a quorum. We have a quorum, yeah. So shall we get started? Um, Liz, did you were you planning to lead or do you want me to go? I was not planning to lead at okay. all. Okay, I've got I'll... the outline here. I gotta all do right, my so it's... There it is. It's Wednesday, September 18th at 6.04, and the commission is now in session. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, during public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their view for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The HRC will not engage in dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. To indicate you wish to make a comment, click raise hand. To join the HRC meeting via telephone, call enter webinar ID when prompted. Then when prompted to enter your participant number, press the hashtag. 
To indicate you wish to make a comment, press star nine on your telephone. If there's somebody there who needs to use their phone, I hope you wrote that down. If not, um, say something and um, I'll reread the instructions. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, let's see, are there any announcements? Only that we have to remember that we have the block party tomorrow and we are to staff our table at the block party. I'm not sure if people actually signed up. I did not sign up because I expect I was expecting to be there the whole time. So um yeah, the expectation is that we all take a shift at the block party tomorrow. I did not sign up either, but I will be at another table for the first hour and then after that I'll be hanging around the HRC table. Um, how about you enjoy, six. sorry? I'll be there five to six. Okay, that's the time I won't be there. So we know that time period is covered with two people at least. Joy, Jacinta. Um, I didn't sign up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I didn't sign up. I have, a, um, I have to be at a different table for work with the need art museum so do you uh, want to make art <laughs> yeah and i'm gonna look to see i'm in springfield for work until seven so i'd have to see if there's something afterwards i could possibly be there by 7 30 quarter to eight but tomorrow i have stuff for my job so it sounds like between six and seven it's just going to be liz and me yeah i uh, think and maybe Rizwana, philip will you be there i think Rizwana signed up for from six to seven. Is one up? Great. Yeah. Great. I will be there the entire time. So. Okay. So it sounds like we're okay on that. Any other announcements? Okay. So let's start the agenda reports and comments. Uh, the first thing is public comment. Is there any public? I'm Are not there any public? Mm -hmm. Doesn't no look like it. So no public comment, member reports. Does anyone have any reports to make? I do, but my son is calling, so I need to start off just for one second. Okay. Did she say she does have a report? Okay. So why don't we come to the report after the next item, which is the DI Cress updates, Philip? Yep, so uh, Cress, all that, um... I have to update on that end is that they are looking to be interviewing hopefully in the next week or so for the responders. Um, Camille is very excited. She and her um, team have come up with the training outline. They felt that it was important to kind of have that before um, doing interviews in a way. So then that way, when we hire on someone, we're not just pushing off a later date. So that way it's just streamlined, hired, and then going from there. So that has been coming to play. And DEI updates, I have that we have a AmeriCorps um, member has started with us. Um, their name is Melina and they're helping out with um, youth programming. So they are doing um, kind of like last year, the split between the DEI office and the um, press department. So two days with DEI, two days with CRESS, and we are moving forward in that regard. Um, as far as for trainings, um, we have staff trainings coming up every other um, Friday, every, or, excuse me, every third Friday of the month, staff trainings are happening for staff to participate in. Um, that is voluntary, and we have various um workshops and topics. So in October, we'll be having an accessibility one. In November, it'll be implicit bias. And this month, we have done kind of a coffee house table. It's going to be just a uh, various amounts of um, topics and kind of talking amongst yourselves in a way that that's happening for staff. And then for department trainings last year, um, Pamela in her dual role of being on the leadership team with CRESS and DEI, um, the staff training that um, happened the first year kind of fell to the wayside due to um, constraints. So we are 
ramping that back up, getting staff training. So we've reached out to departments to kind of see what um, what it is that they feel department heads and staff as well could be useful in their departments to talk about because we really feel that um, singling into departments rather than us giving a topic that we're giving to everybody is more useful because as you can imagine, police is going to be different from fire, DPW will be different from health department and so on and so on. So we are in the talks of um, department heads and then going to be sending out a survey to go ahead and get that information. And hopefully those trainings will start either in December, but um, for sure, um, January 1, we will definitely be having a schedule for that in regards to that. Um, I shared with a couple of people before um, we started the meeting that we are doing outreach events. So we've done UMass off student, uh, off -student campus housing resource fair events. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and so uh, last week I was um, close to the university. Today, Pamela is um, out and about. And the next week we have one. We've also done the block party. Um, or not done the block party, sorry, we've done open house. It's been a long week and it's only Wednesday. <laughs> we did open house yesterday. We have the block party on Thursday. And then the following week, we have another UMass event. So we are really trying to get our department out there in the community as much as possible. Um, our tabling, if you you will see it all, whoever shows up at the block party, we've got in a couple of um, swag items that I think are really attracting people to the table. And then we're having conversations and having um, people kind of ask questions like, oh, I didn't know the DEI department existed. So we're really trying to make that aware to various community members, as well as invite them up to the office to kind of get a tour. There's not much to see, but you know, getting people in the door, that's uh, what it's all about. And so in that way, um, we also have a volunteer fair happening. That's um, this Saturday, it's with the senior center. It's gonna be on the town common from 10 to one. And um, I think that is it. Philip, did you, no. I was talking to my son, but did you mention that you all, we had a table at the um, back to school event? Oh, I did not mention that. Yes, we did have a table at the back to school event. <laughs> like I said, we've had a lot of events coming up and this week in <laughs> particular, we've had a, a ton coming up. The last thing is that we do have a Becoming Beloved community um, event happening next Thursday from 5.45 or five forty-five to eight o'clock. And the topic is America's racial history. As you can imagine, there's no way that we're going to cover every single thing in two hours. It is a conversation to have people get conversations started around a topic that can be hard, but at the same time needs to be talked about, right? And so it's really a more learning experience, how to conversate with your fellow neighbor. And so we will be doing that at the Bank Center. Okay, thank you, Philip. Um, Liz, did you have a, did you want to give your report now? Well, it wasn't really a report. It was to say that I usually um, listen in uh, with the CSSJC. I was not able to do that this week. So that was my report, <laughs> is that I wasn't able to give a report because I wasn't able to be at the meeting last Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday. Yeah, it um, was an important meeting. And I wonder, Philip, if you could give us a summary or somebody else who was there. I was not there, um, but what I heard was that um, there was discussions around youth programming. Um, I remember that was one of the topics that had came up. And so um, clarity came from um, that there is not funds for a youth center as of now. Youth programming is the focus that we are taking. Um, that is what we have. So that's where we're at with that conversation. Um, in terms of CRESS, I believe that it was the update that training was happening, um, kind of what I just gave right now. And you'll have to forgive me, I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but I know that those were um, two main points that were talked about. So I'm a little perplexed because we have 80 acres. Mm -hmm. And 80 Acres sponsored a Black Roots Festival on the Town Common uh, two Sundays ago. 
And part of that was that they were opening a Barry and Judy Brooks um, youth center. And um, I'm not sure if that's, if their um, focus, if you will, is going to be separate from whatever the town is, uh, CSSJC has mandated. And so um, I'm not sure how that works. Right. Um, I think you're not gonna... the, the only one with that question. I think that it is definitely, um, as far as hearing anything from 80 Acres, you all heard the information. I think even before we all heard the information, we kind of got secondhand information. I was there at the event, so I heard it firsthand. But um, uh, hearing, I told everybody about it that I'm just letting in Rizwana. Um, on our end for the town um, in terms of working together, I that is a conversation that will have to be had with someone higher up than me. I, I cannot speak to that. Hi, Rizwana, welcome. Hello, thank you. Okay, you've come at exactly the right time. Um, okay, yeah. Are there any questions for Philip before we move to the next agenda item? No, I don't have any. Okay, so then uh, the next item is the HRC annual report and draft. And actually, although the agenda item says review of draft, it's been around so many times that if people are willing to take a vote on it, I would really like to go forward with that. I'd like to hear other opinions. If not, I'd like to, I will propose to vote it. So, um... Last we met, uh, you and Deborah were not there, but we did. I don't get the word mandate is such a weird word. I didn't, it wasn't a mandate, but it, there was a request that everybody review it so that we could vote on it this week. Um, so mm -hmm. I hope that happened. Um, it is part of the minutes, but however, the minutes didn't come out until a little while ago. However, again, as Ronnie stated, the draft was has been there for some time. Months. Yeah, so um, let's vote then. Um, so I propose that we, um, I forgot the language. My mind is blank. I propose that we- uh, You make a motion that we accept. Right. Yes, I so... make a motion. <laughs> okay, Liz, are you making the motion? No, I'm telling you what the words are. No, <laughs> you can make the motion. <laughs> well, here's okay. the thing. Uh, I make the motion that we accept the draft human rights report as our final report to the town council. I second it. Okay, so everyone in favor say aye, and I will call oh, out. Sorry, is there discussion? Yet. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, there's some discussion. So I'm having trouble with one part. Let me scroll down to see if I can find it. And it has to do with cultural events for the future, not from the past. And I'm not sure how to state this without, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. I think it's the bottom of page three. Is that right? Uh... I see it. Would it be useful if I pulled up the motion or the draft? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, give me one second. It has to do with not work in the tw in 2024, but work in the future. And it has to do with cultural events. Yeah. Um, and I that, think so it's the bottom of page three. Let me see if At I least on the it. Yeah, there it is. Cultural events. And then A is we recommend the following. So that's the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, DIA is number of one major group to be held. So my my concern with that is. Um, yeah, from July 2023 20, through June 2024, the Human Rights Commission co-sponsored too many cultural events. Some were incredibly well attended, others were not. They were also a great imbalance in the community served 
And so when you say that, and you say five focused on African-American community, but the black population is one third the size of the Asian population. Well, here's my problem with that. Um, historically speaking, when we talk about black America, or African-American culture, Negro culture, going back to slavery, we was the other N word or in color after that. Um, we were brought here as a, as, as a, um, way to build this country. Now, our Native American ancestors were here already, but when white America took over, they took over and brought, and th this country was built on the backs mm -hmm. of enslaved African Americans. Mm -hmm. So to for me, I have an issue with um, using the fact that we celebrate African, a more African American entities and not others is a problem for me based on the historical mm. contributions that Black America has made to this country. Um, yeah, so that's my pause with that statement. If that's the way we're going to go forward, um, that's a problem for me. My my suggestion would be that we just delete that second sentence. Five focused that sentence ending in which had one event and simply say there was also a great imbalance in the community served. Commissioners spent 100% of their time outside of meetings on, on the events. I mean, I think that's fine. Would, you, would that meet your needs, Liz, if we just well, deleted that sentence? Well, here's the other part is that we want to just do one major event that encompasses all cultures, which means we're taken away from the contributions that Black America has had when we talk about not celebrating Black History Month or Kwanzaa or, at the, or MLK, um, Juneteenth, and the reading of the uh, Frederick Douglass's 4th of July, as well as, I'm blanking on the, the other one that I wanted to speak about, but anyway, um, I, I personally don't want to do one huge cultural event if that's going to detract us from celebrating, honoring, and respecting the contributions of Black America, um, not only in, in the United States, but also in Amherst. If you go down and go to the Banks Community Center and tour the ancestral bridges with um, Deborah Bridges, you will find um, that African Americans made many more contributions through um, service and leadership in the armed forces with the 54th and the 55th Regiment and the 5th Cavalry for um, the United States. And many of those soldiers are came and lived in Amherst. So um, it's just a problem for me to take away those and make one cultural event without highlighting and, con and especially since we continue as black Americans to be uh, vilified in these United States to take away those things that uplift us by having just one community event. So that's to say, I mean, you can still vote for it. That's just my opinion about that part of our commission in going forward. Joy, did you want to speak? No, I, I just want to thank Liz for bringing that in. I, I a hundred percent concur. Like, that's all I just want to. Say. Anyone else? Rizwana, you have your hand up. Yes, actually, I agree with that also because uh, Black American, uh, they are the ones who did contribute and they should be celebrating all of the holidays, you know, that are there, you know. So I totally agree because this is where they are. They have they have roots over here that um, if we compare it with the rest, uh, they, they don't have that much of vested uh, interest as a nation. So uh, I know it's very hard to um, uh, say it in the right manner, but I totally, I, I think I agree with that because, you know, uh, in the 
Barbara um, had Pam. Pam actually had sent these uh, information also, and in here it did say funding reparations for African Americans and Amherst. You know, there was like in this um, essay that I read, it did say that there is some kind of a disparity. Uh, so we have to look at that. We cannot treat everything the same way. That's it. Any other comments? If not, I would like suggest suggestions on how to how you would like to change it, Deborah. First, well, I was just going to get to that, which is to say, I think um, taking out the two sentences or one sentence that you recommended in that first paragraph uh, is hopefully an easy fix. So I would recommend that. Um, and then my only question is like. I, I want to be clear on what Liz you're suggesting. It sounds like you're suggesting that every um, event that was uh, scheduled this past year for the African American community is held again in the future. I just want to get clear on exactly what you're saying. I'm not sure if I'm saying that. What I'm saying is there are, so for instance, um, even though we, participated in um, the reading of Frederick Douglass. We did not sponsor that South Church, South Congregational Church did. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that we have to um, celebrate all of them. I'm just, and you know, there was, we DEI sponsored Juneteenth, but so did Ancestral Bridges. Mm -hmm. And so some people was able to go to that. Um, so. What I'm saying is that I don't want to us to be limited in one cultural celebration if we then makes it impossible for us to then sponsor or co-sponsor um, an African-American yes. celebration. I'm not saying we have to do them all. We might just yeah. do Kwanzaa or MLK one year or Kwanzaa for Black History Month or whatever it is. I just don't want us to limit ourselves and not being able to celebrate the richness of the African American community as we have helped um, build this country. Yeah, the only thing I would say is that um, there were such disparities in attendance. Like two years ago, Juneteenth was really well attended. And this past year, I was only there for an hour, but there was almost nobody there at Amherst's iteration there was also the business community and you know so i the only thing i would say is um oh and the mlk celebration was incredibly well attended so um maybe give some thought to you know what uh well juneteenth was celebrated on june 15th that was part of the issue uh, there was a juneteenth celebration sponsored by the black business owners of amherst and that was very well attended. So yeah. we have to take, so, you know, we just have to take a, so that's why I'm saying, even though we did not sponsor that, so that's why I'm saying we don't have to sponsor everything. Yeah. Um, as long as we don't limit ourselves to not being able to sponsor it, if we so choose by, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, I so do have a suggestion, I think you're right. Could we see that again, uh, Philip? I'm sorry. If you no, could just fine. go down. I agree with you, Liz, that um, we need some language to give um, both the capacity to co-sponsor and the capacity to sponsor. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree. So I, I don't know what the right language is, but yeah. yeah. I don't have the language either, but I think in A, there's scope to elaborate and where we say one or two events be held with a range of activities, blah, blah, blah. We were being very ge general, but maybe instead of um, so I where, think... we say, where we say the reduced number of events may be supplemented with less labor intensive gatherings rather than putting it that way. Maybe we can say something else there to highlight the point that you're trying to make. Because it doesn't um, have to be less I labor think... intensive. I'm trying to re reword 
And I should have thought about this before I just spoke. So there you go. Um, Philip, you go next. You have your hand up after Liz. Or maybe, Philip, you can go while Liz is thinking. I, yeah, I just wanted to say from the DEI um, perspective, Liz, I think that you're right on with it. Um, I just had a conversation with someone from 80 Acres actually um, about MLK Day. Um, they were reaching out to see kind of how we could already collaborate with them. So I think that it's already kind of there in the community in terms of, you know, people expect these events to happen, but maybe they just are a little bit different. And in the conversation, um, that I was having, and it's early on conversations, is that maybe we do the speech that is always done, but 80 Acres is looking to have kind of a more banquet type style. So how can we combine the two events, events rather than have two separate ones to where people have to go to two separate locations and have more time consuming. So I think that that kind of speaks into what happened with Juneteenth this past year. I know that there was an effort on staff's end because. Um, um, I think that the idea for having it on the 15th rather than the 19th was that the 19th staff has off. And so having staff, you know, not work on a holiday that is given to us, but then ha we have to work also. So I, I think finding a fine balance of it is definitely key. And I think that having language that one major event and or two, you know, leaves room for the and sponsoring type of events um, in terms of kind of the Frederick Douglass reading um, as well as possibly Kwanzaa or anything in that regard. So, so I think, it's, oh, go ahead, Liz. I was thinking about um, taking off the first, uh, the Take out that second because of these inequities and because we support more targeted strategies to amplify knowledge and support. I think it should say something like the DI team reduced the number of events to one major event and also sponsoring or co-sponsoring other cultural events as we see fit or something. I don't know how to say that. Yeah, um, carrying out cultural additional cultural events in partnership with other organizations and agencies, you know. Yeah, well, both like in that. partnership with and independently. I, I mean, I see the biggest role of DEI is if we can't co-sponsor something like, what if nobody else is doing an MLK well, event? Then we can. Then we it. have to, right? Yeah. Um, I should have muted myself before I started talking. I liked your language, Liz. Is it? Can we type that in, Philip, so that? We can then. Uh, I so I actually cannot because I am uh, <laughs> not on my work desk. I'm on my laptop one, but I'm writing notes on it, and I will definitely get this written. You all can vote to have the language changed. Um, for basically like when the motion is made, all you all need is just language is acknowledging the changes. Mm -hmm. If everybody agrees, of course. So shall I move again to approve this with the following changes? The five focused sentence will be eliminated. It will be replaced with uh, language proposed by Liz right now that uh, Philip will incorporate into the document. With those changes, um, I move to approve the human rights report for presentation to the town council. I second. Thank you. So now we will vote, um, and I'll just call out the names as they appear on my screen. Say yes or no, please. Deb? Deborah Colony? Yes. Joy Eiffel? Yes. Jacinta Smith? Yes. Liz Haygood? Yes. Rizwana Khan? Yes. Ronnie Parker? Yes. So it's unanimous. Thank you. The motion is passed. All right. Good job, team. So, we got the biggest part of our work done, I think. Nice. Um, Ronnie, can I just yes. add in? Um, I don't know if you all saw the email about town council. I did reach out to them, and they did offer October 7th for you all. Oh, to, I'm good with that. To come? I don't know. I don't know what you all I'm good with that. 
So it would be good if more members other than Liz and myself could attend the October 7th town council meeting. Um, we really, I have a goal to really try to engage them a little bit. Generally, the town council this last year has not engaged with us, has not communicated with us. We asked for a representative and nobody has volunteered to be on the council. Uh, nobody asks us anything. Nobody brings us in or invites us to any human rights related uh, discussions. And I think in order to change that, we really have to be more present. And so I would really encourage everyone to at least be there, even if you don't say anything. What day is that again? October what? October 7th. I will try to attend. Uh, it's on my calendar now, barring unforeseen great. circumstances or the plague. I plan to be there. That's great. Uh, I think your role, your presence is important, Deb, because um, if there are questions about the future plans that you've taken leadership on, it would be important for you to speak about that, I think. And anything else you want, of course. Are there any other questions about the 7th? Okay, then um, let's continue down our agenda. Um, I'm sorry, Ronnie, I don't mean to interrupt you again. Yeah. Camille has jumped on and I'm wondering if we can give her um, an acknowledgement. Oh, I didn't see her. Oh, person. hello, Camille. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you pop in. Sorry. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> I'm like sitting in my car as I just got home. So thank uh, you. I'm sorry I'm so late. So we had a press update from Philip earlier in the agenda, but if you'd like to... It was Say very big. Words, we would welcome that. <laughs> yes, I'm like, hi. Um, okay. I don't know what Philip said, so I can't. Um, what can I say? Um, oh, we are. Crest is really working on its foundation and getting. Um. We're really working on the basics, making sure that we have all of our information correct and making sure that we have standard operating procedures set. Um, we're also getting ready to start interviews for new responders um, with a timeline of getting them onboarded around the first week in November. So very exciting. Um, working on trainings. Let's see what else. I just a lot of things that are going on, a lot of balls in the air, um, trying to work on getting some additional funding through grants. The um, Department of Health grant is still um, waiting for the governor's signature. So nothing more is going on that. So uh, very lean budget, just trying to make things work as best as we can. Are there any questions for Camille while she's here? I have one question, and that's about uh, whether you're progressing and how you think you're progressing on the uh, 911 calls and sort of how, mm. what Chris will respond to, if it's okay to ask that. No, it's not a problem. So the... The problem is, is that um, the way that um, retired Chief Nelson uh, coined it was that we were trying to fly the airplane at the same time as build it. So over the last two years, we've been going to a lot of calls and building relationships and everything else, which is very important to me. However, we have been on dispatch since December of 2023, but there were no in-place um, procedures and information for the dispatchers. And there's always a, um, an issue of liability. So the former uh, supervisor, superintendent, I forgot what he was called, for dispatch um, was leery about sending us to calls because of liability issues. So now what's happening is we are working with dispatch to create standard operating procedures and directives so that they can go down the list and know what calls to send Crest to. And 
this is a very thought out process with a lot of information from all sides. And once we finish that, then it will have to go through and be approved by Chief Ting and also go through the town's um, legal representative. So this takes some time and it's frustrating people all the way around, but I have faith that when we get this done, we will have a rock solid foundation to build upon. And I think that a lot of that has gotten lost. And the other part of this is, is because there was an article in the Gazette um, and I sent it to my best friend. And the one thing he said was, he said that it didn't mention, I've been on the job now for five months. So it's been a short amount of time. And in five months, I think that there's a lot of things that have happened and a lot of positivity that's going on moving forward. So yes, we moved back a little bit. Um, we're down staff. We had to stop our Saturday hours. Um, but the things that are positive and are moving in the right direction is, is that we are getting more calls from the community and from our outreach and people are knowing to call us directly or show up, or we're getting referrals from people who we've helped. So even though, you know, it's not the way that it was envisioned to begin with, we're still working on it. And there's also other parts of it, like little things that can be done, um, such as making phone calls on behalf of neighbors uh, for things that they might need. And I'm willing to do that. And I think it has really worked out well. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback for the help that we've given folks. Uh, the other thing we're working on is our social media presence because that's how people find out about us. Yes, word of mouth is great, but showing up at events is better. And the other part of that is just being in the community so that people actually see us and they know us. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. It's really helpful to hear from you and also to be reminded that you've only been here for five months. Certainly for me, it feels like you've been here forever, but I wouldn't have guessed five months. I would have guessed <laughs> close to a year somehow. It, it, anyway, that is thank the, you for being here. Yeah, that's the funny part that I, I laugh about. It just seems like I've been here for longer than that. And that when I, I have to actually sit down and tell myself it's only been five months. Here are the things that you've gotten done, Camille. These are all positive things. And even though, you know, there are people that think that things should happen so much more quickly, including myself, I will say when I came in, I thought, oh, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this done. And realizing, no, you know, this is testing on my frustration tolerance and how I need to also learn to be patient and work with the system. So, um, that has been a, a huge learning curve for me. So I'm, I'm happy to do it. I love what I do. I come in every day with a smile on my face um, because this work is important and it's, I love it. <laughs> and I, I, I just want to commend you on that. And, and also, you know, looking at like, we're talking about a systemic change here, right? And I mean, I know this crest has been for a little bit, but like the the, the level of change that it's trying to do is so ingrained in our system currently of how we do things particularly around crisis and response in law enforcement, right? And, you know, it's very hard for police to stand down and stand back and let somebody else take take over and take command. And so it is not an easy task. It's slow and steady um, and, you know, you just keep chipping away at it. Um, and so I just want to really commend you and, and encourage you um, to, to, to keep going, right? It might not seem like a lot's happening, but we're not, this is not a Band-Aid solution. And this is not, you're not coming in and trying to change a small little, like, let's just change a small little policy. You're like, this is systemic change of how this community and most communities respond to mental health crisis or people in crisis and, and removing, you know, again, law enforcement. So uh, it's, it's no easy task. So thank I, you I so much for saying that. And the other part of it is there's also a stigma to it. So Correct. and the, the systemic change that I'm trying to help create, the other part of it is, is getting, um, getting buy-in 
from the community is very important. And that relationship that I have with the chief of police is very important. And we are on the same page of how we're going to do this. And to be able to sit there and go to him and his captains and say, okay, here are the standard operating procedures for when we get a call where somebody needs um, transportation. And it's not it's not a one size fits all. A lot of these things have to be really tailored to the community that we're in. And what we're doing is we're not reinventing the wheel, but we're taking what um, APD is already doing. And as my number one calls it, crescifying it. So I love that. And we're just making it applicable. And the other part of it is, is that a lot of people don't understand that you know, changing from police going somewhere to Cress, again, it takes time and trying to get not only like the newer uh, police officers, but the old ones that have been there and entrenched in the system to change their thoughts, to realize that we are all on the same team, that we're trying to help people and they're, we're not here to take over. We want to make things easier on everybody involved, especially the public. So Riswana has had her hand up for some time. So yeah, yeah. Okay, Riswana, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, Camille, you're doing a great job. You have a great attitude, and I'm we're really happy about that. But I am just curious because we were here at the beginning when the town had hired the consultants, the two really, I think, a very expensive consultants. One was. The consultant, I, I forget the names actually, but I did go over every page because I was creating something and so on. And one of the consultant uh, agency was basically all uh, retired police, right? And the other one was uh, complimentary also. So they had laid out the whole blueprint of what Crest will be, and they had brought in all the um, areas or the states that are using it as a... a as a new tr trending uh, situation that happened, that you know, recurred or actually was invented because of the incidents with African Americans uh, on that pretext. So these uh, consulting firms were really very critical in dictating, in a way, with all the research and principles and how it should be done. Uh, my question is, how how much? Uh, is being implemented or do you have it as a framework? Are you using it as a framework? Because uh, they are the ones who instigated it. You know, the, the town really uh, utilized them. So that is my question. Uh, how much are we going back to them for um, our support of this systemic change? Because obviously they are the people with all the research. So okay, thank you. I, yeah, I think you were talking about, you're talking about the LEAP report, the law. Yeah. Yeah. LEAP, and there were two of them, two of them. There was the LEAP, LEAP one and there was another one. The CSWG yes. part one and part two. So mm -hmm. actually it's kind of funny because the LEAP report, Amos, and I can't remember his last name right now. We spoke to him a couple months ago, not long after I started, and he went out on paternity leave and he just reached back saying that he's back and we're going to be working with him um, to kind of iron out some of the things that we are seeing here. Because again, we are talking about uh, Amherst, the town gown, which is different than a lot of other communities. And the other part of this is, is that there is no standard for what um, alternative response looks like. Everyone looks to Durham, um, North Carolina as the gold standard, but then they have to remember that Durham has a very big area. They have a lot of people and they have a vast budget. We are working with a limited budget, smaller amount of people and a lot of work to be done. So those type of things and working within the system that we have you know, makes it difficult, uh, challenging, and invigorating at the same time. Because again, the the policies that we're working on are working to change that dynamic. So 
um, our nearest, like, I wouldn't say like partner agency or someone that's in the same field is in, um, I think it's the DART program in Northampton. They are embedded in public health. So those are the things that are different. We are our own um, third branch of public safety. A lot of these are embedded in public health. Cambridge is its own department um, like us. However, they do not have office hours. They also are staffed primarily by clinicians who have a caseload. So there's a big difference when you have um, clinicians having a caseload versus um, lived experience responders who are out there working in the community. <clears throat> That's really helpful, thank you. Yeah, so basically, uh, Camille, you're saying that the nature of the calls have been changed because they initially said that the they will be more volatile calls that you will be, uh, Crest will be addressing, for example, uh, you know, uh, late night noise complaints, and all sorts of things where mental, because they are basically, you are saying that it, it, there's too much liability in that. So basically now the trajectory has moved to the community engagement. Not, no, not necessarily. So what has happened when it comes to like the, as they call them, you call them the volatile calls. Mm -hmm. It's not that those calls, what it is is the liability that the, um, the supervisor for the dispatch felt that they were wanted to protect, he wanted to protect his people. And um, coming from the fire service as a lieutenant and having my own crew, you know, I understood it was incumbent on me to make sure that my crew was safe. So I understand where he was coming from. The new um, supervisor there feels that we can work together to get these um, directives and standard operating procedures so that we can go to uh, a more vast and um, encompassing type of call. And the other part of that is, is that when people, and this is, I do this myself, when you read the police log of what they say people called in and then what they actually are, you know, um, somebody might call in and I was at a meeting today talking about stuff, saying there's a noise complaint, for example, and being in Amherst thinking, OK, it's a party. There's, I don't know, 15, 20 people then showing up and finding out, no, it's 100 people there. <laughs> so when the police go to a noise complaint uh, after a certain time, they send two officers. So you're talking about two armed people going to a noise complaint. Um, we are unarmed. So there are certain things that, you know, we have to know ahead of time. And there, those are the type of things that if you're just getting a call, you don't know ahead of time necessarily. If somebody gives you more information, that can change. And that's why it's important for us to work with our partners in the police and uh, the fire department to make sure that we're keeping our people safe. So but, basically, yeah. uh, uh, just uh, another thing, and uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, the fact is that uh, basically, they are, are you also addressing well-being checks? Uh, because mm -hmm. uh, the well-being checks are also that uh, might be Chris is doing or anything like that, the well-being checks, you know, just to check on somebody. Uh, Okay, this is we, going to be the last question because okay. we have more. I was just going to let you know. Items. Yes, uh -huh. okay. yes, we it. are doing. Okay. We are doing more well-being checks. Uh -huh. Again, these are. This is a, a learning curve for That's both good. Crest and for APD. It's that as they get to know us, you know, the responders, etc., they are understanding going to a call and saying, you know what? Nope, this isn't us. This is a Crest call, and we get called. Okay, so. It is happening more and more often is that the there was a desk sergeant that uh, a woman came in with a problem and he <sighs> called us and said, this is not a police call. This is a crest call. So we met them down there and took care of it. Thank you. Yeah. All right.
Thank you. Thank you, Camille. Thank you. As you can see, um, it's been really valuable for us to have you, and we hope uh, you'll come again. And Thank you coming. very much. Um, so for now, I'm going to move on because we've got a couple more agendas oh, I understand. that might yes. require some discussion. Okay. Um, so the next item is the HRC retreat. And Philip, I'm handing it over to you. Uh, all I have is just that um, the poll went out and it did not produce a time frame that worked for everybody. In particular, um, Pamela and I felt that both the co-chairs should be there. I don't know if you all feel the same way, but it just didn't work out in a way that um, everybody could come. So uh, the suggestion that we have, and obviously it is your all choice and what you can decide is to possibly open up to later dates moving forward. So that would be October 27th, November 3rd, and so on. I don't know where you all want to go for scheduling. So that's all I have and you for you. I wondered decide. if we could just have more dates to choose from. Right. Or more times or something. That's it is up to you all. Because there were two dates and right. That was from the last meeting that um the October, what is it? Um, the weekend of the long holiday was not preferred. Um, I guess that's what you all did last time. And that was, um, I think the October 13th. So that's why I skipped that one. So I can send out a poll for October 27th or November 3rd. Um, you do have everybody here. So I don't know if you want to do that verbally right now. It's like I said, it's up to you, whatever you all do want. Do people it. have their calendars or do you want to get the doodle? So did you? I like the doodle. Okay. I prefer anyone... the doodle as well, but I'd actually like to ask what will be, what will take place at the retreat. Um, because all of us committing a day and not knowing what the substance is feel, well, I don't know about anyone else. I'll just speak for myself. I'm busy. <laughs> and so committing an entire day without knowing what we're going to be doing, um, I can fill out a doodle poll, but it's hard. It's hard to make that commitment. I agree. Yeah, I agree also. Did you all talk about this, the content of the retreat last week, last meeting? Because I wasn't here. Uh, if not, um, in my mind, the content of the retreat would be what we've put forward as our future proposed activities for next year. So we would focus more on how to, operationalizing that. Presumably, we would have the town council's approval at that point. And we have quite an important and um, I, I think sort of a big agenda, if you think about it, for, for the future, our future agenda. And I think I would see the retreat as focusing on that. Where are we going now with the direction that we've chosen and what needs to happen? Who needs to do what? I mean, sort of more practical things of making that agenda happen so that we can jump right into it. And months later, we're not still saying, okay, so what do we do now? I think that's great. I think it would be really helpful if there were draft uh, proposals on how to, because having one or two people do that and then the entire committee evaluate it is a lot more efficient. Um, that's one suggestion. And the other is um, eight hours, uh, I don't know how to say this. I mean- say I, half a day. Yeah, half a day is doable. Eight hours feels like a killer. Yeah, I think the thoughts about the retreat and how much and what we should talk about. Yeah, I, I agree with Deborah because we should have basically a half a day, four hours, and we should have the drafts beforehand. Everybody who wants to contribute, we should have some kind of a rough draft. Joy, Jacinta, you haven't said anything about this, Liz. I agree. I think a half a day and I think a real clear agenda and some preparation before the actual retreat so that the retreat is kind of just like the re final reviewing and approval, but not starting from scratch of creating whatever document. Well, that means that everybody here needs to think about what their goals are and what we want to bring forward 
as a commission. And that's what the things that we flesh out at the retreat. And if we're going to do that, um, I, I personally think that takes more than four hours. And if you want to keep it to four hours, that means that everybody needs to be there, be on time and focused. And that's not always the, the what happens. So that's the commitment. And just speaking honestly, um, because we have, you know, Philip and I, two years ago, when we was at Munson Library with um, some of the folks that was on the retreat back then, we fleshed out a lot of stuff, but it took us eight hours to do. And we really put forward some things and put them in motion because we was able to flush them out at the retreat. So um, for me personally, I don't think four hours is enough. We just, you know, an hour and a half or two hours of a meeting, get off topic. So if that's what you want is four hours, you know, we'd have to talk to Pamela about that. But that means you got to come, be on time, be focused, and let's get to work. Mm -hmm. Did you have something, Camille? Sorry, no. Yeah, I guess like, um, kind of like going off the bylaws that we talked about, like, I feel like that in itself could be the entire meeting. I feel like we sort of touched on what, like, within the bylaws, what is it that our role is? How are we doing it in a way that's um, more modern in a sense of acknowledging, you know, people and the different languages? language that we want to use right so I feel like we wrote that whole thing and now like I don't know specifically like also the um I don't remember exactly what Deborah um proposed like what the title was but thinking about that tool that we were supposed to like build or start implementing within the committee like I feel like that in itself is an entire meeting <laughs> um, talking about how we can start building that as a resource together um, and also like who's facilitating what aspect of that so I feel like for the meeting um, like my interest is specifically like talking about okay who is assigned what role within that I feel like we're all pretty comfortable once we get newer people it would make more sense to have a more fleshed out meeting about our roles and how we're doing like everything but like Deborah and I have already had like a year on the on the committee um Philip's been here really <laughs> before <laughs> I even got here came back <laughs> left came back um so I feel like in terms of the retreat last year that was kind of an intro a very introductory thing for me that was really helpful um, but now, because we're still waiting on new committee members to get either approved or interviewed, um, we should use that time to start, um, yeah, kind of doing the field work or the groundwork um, of building this this system and resource that we can have an actual impact on the community. So I feel like in terms of an agenda, I would like to see that on the agenda, like who's doing what what do we need to do? Do we need to write something? I know Deborah's already written it, but do we need to write more in depth how we're going to get there? Um, and whether the goals should be far or like more specific, like, okay, we're making a survey. Like when we're making this survey together, what does that look like? So either one, prioritizing one thing for the meeting that we're going to do, or two, doing a brief outline of what our roles are. And then specific specifically getting into that like I yeah I feel like we should use the bylaws as that kind of how we formate format the meeting or the retreat and in terms of how long it is like I don't I'm a college student so I can definitely set the time for four hours or eight hours but I want to be like considerate of everyone else's time and then to November would be way better for me because all of October I have um, a giant wedding that I have to go attend and then um, a bunch of responsibilities on the weekend. So November 3rd would, I'm not here October 27th or um, October um, 17th um, or 21st. <laughs> so those three, like, th three weekends are out for me. Um, it's possible I can attend via Zoom maybe, but I don't think so because I'll be on the um, But yeah, that's kind of what I've, I vote for in a nutshell, like 
using that time to talk about that specific um, aspect of our bylaws. Thank you, Rizwana. Yes, uh, basically last year also, we had the same uh, bylaws, we discussed them and everything was very verbal and we have crossed that milestone. So I think we should uh, focus more on actual things that are happening in the town because uh, uh, last time I also mentioned that uh, that was what was bothering me also. For example, uh, you know, there's so many issues. For example, it's a gender equality or racial um, discrimination or rights of migrants. For example, let's take rights of migra migrants and refugees. So might be there's a uh, protection from deportation, ensuring asylum rights. You know, there's so much happening. So uh, I don't know why we have to just stick to the bylaws and discussing them all over again after doing it for almost, for almost one year. So in if we go, look into, for example, the refugees and immigrants and so on, we will need help with the ground reality and um, the, uh, gathering data over here and so on. So I don't know how you approach it, but personally, I think we should uh, be more engaged with the community instead of just uh, creating the bylaws and again, revising them. That's, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry if I uh, misinterpreted, like <laughs> this said that, what I'm saying <laughs> is that we've already, yeah, like, <laughs> agreed on the bylaws and mm -hmm. now with like going through them and creating like plans mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. like put those in action going forward. So if I'm reading this correctly, mm -hmm. uh, an agenda item that says proposal, next steps, colony on our agenda. Um, that is already something that we have put forward to the town council as part of our um, annual report that we'd like to focus on. Therefore, given that, I imagine that we would need to do some type of icebreaker because we need to be able to um, know each other, know ourselves, and be able to trust each other. Um, we're going to have some new people introducing them to who we are and what we do and how we all decided to run for uh, the Human Rights Commission. I can see us then um, taking a real hard look and following Jacinta's lead and Deb's lead, of course, and putting some real um, steps into her proposal at the retreat. That's what I'm looking at if I'm reading everybody correctly. and. Um, but in order for us to be able to do that, we need to um, embrace each other and embrace ourselves and refocus on and focus on why we became commissioners in the first place. So it's sounding to me a little bit like we're saying that, um, I'm afraid to even say this, but correct me, that we're coming up with part of an agenda for the retreat and that the core, in, in addition to the introduction that Liz talked about, that the core of it really has to do with these things that we said in our section of our uh, report on the way forward, that we want to train business leaders, we want this whole research agenda of data collection um, to sub for residents to submit complaints. We talked about accountability and we talked about cultural events. So maybe all of this just gets fleshed out at the retreat. And there was the suggestion that we should put thought into this ahead of time, these three things, so that we're not starting from scratch. Just or some of us could put some thought into it. The next steps proposal is for three years. I don't think all three years need to be fleshed out at this retreat. I would propose that um, I will create a draft for next year's activity under our plan for moving forward. I think Jacinda's thought about going back to the bylaws and see what else we might be have obligated ourselves to um, is a great idea. And I think it would be great if somebody else took a look at the new bylaws and said, oh, in addition to 
training folks, that's year one, is there something else that we need to be doing? Mm -hmm. And then putting a proposal together for that. And then a third person can put together a proposal on cultural events. And those three things would be our mm -hmm. basic agenda. Oh, in addition to the um, getting to know you icebreaker, which I think is also a great idea. So four things. A question has been raised as to whether four hours is sufficient. I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, I wonder if we could put the facilitators in the group, Philip and Pamela in particular, to work on timing once the agenda is sort of pulled together and then uh, we could discuss it next at the next meeting in terms of actually putting a time, uh, a date and the time. Is that yeah. all right? Or does it feel like we're pushing things out too much? I had one other agenda item and that is um, the news that the town finally has access to these translation, the translation technology. And I'm wondering how, and I'm just leaving it to everyone to think about it a little bit, but I'm wondering how we can use that to diversify both the commission and also discussions that we have, the content of what we're thinking about, because to me, it's a real groundbreaker as far as um, engaging more people in the community who are non-English speakers. So I'm not, you know, it's not really, I don't really know how to discuss it because I just saw that in the town news, but I think we really, if we have this translation capacity, we have to think about how to use it to be more inclusive of the communities that cannot participate in meetings like this one at this time. I'd like to propose that the DEI office come up with a proposal for how we can use the translation services and that we review it at our next meeting. I would second that. But back to the retreat. I, I was going to say, get away from the retreat. Oh. I, I blinked. Oh, I thought we I thought we were done with that. Sorry. Uh, I think no. we need to decide on the length and if we're going to use a Google uh or whatever, a, an electronic meeting uh schedule or are we going to do it here in the room? Yeah. Go so ahead. since we gave two dates and since Jacinta is not available and I think she's an integral part of this group, and she said November 3rd works best for her and nobody objected. I say we just schedule it for November 3rd and let Pamela and Philip tell us where it's going to be. Um, two years ago, we was at the Munson Library. Last year, we was in the town meeting room. So, and then we can flesh out the length, whether it's four, five, or nine, 12 hours. No, it's kidding. <laughs> so, so are we agreed that it's November 3rd and we'll flesh out the agenda and the number of hours at the next meeting? Philip? I think um, y'all can decide on dates. I think me and Pamela are pretty open for that. But um, in terms of length of it, I do just want to add that um, just historically, conversations go longer than one might think on certain topics. I think this is a great example of even talking about what it is that's going to be talked about. Took about 30 minutes or so to kind of discuss in that way. Um, usually oh, 15 lunch. minutes. Stop it. <laughs> Usually lunch um, is always needed. You know, people need to recharge their brains in, in that regard. Um, so I would just say to just be mindful of topics that may take longer in a way that four hours may not be um, enough time to cover everything it is you all have listed. I know that for me, looking at the agenda will help me understand better about the amount of time. And we're just talking about it in the cold here. So I think next month when we sit down more closely with the components of it, we can revisit the time. But we'll take your thoughts into consideration, Philip. Thank you. I will commit to having a draft um, outline for next steps on training by next meeting. Um, it'd be great if somebody wanted to take the lead on the conversation around celebrations and events, if they were willing to put out a draft proposal for the next meeting. And then uh, if somebody wanted to review bylaws and see if something else jumped out at them. If we had three outlines, 
it will be really helpful for evaluating how much time we'll need. Um, I can ahead, just volunteer to... to look at the bylaws and um, talk about those and create some kind of outline or topics to touch on um, or yeah, questions surrounding them. It's, <laughs> I'm not like super, I don't know how like formatting or motion this and whatever, but um, I would be happy to share those maybe also sooner. I don't know if I'll be able to be at the next meeting, but I could possibly send them to um, fill up to share at the meeting too. Um, so. Thank you. Also, wait, before um, <laughs> switching off, I, I just had to use the bathroom quickly, but in terms of the four hours thing, I do agree with Liz, like the humanizing aspect of the retreat should also be like, um, utilize, like, and I know we have like a lunch or like activities built in but I do think having like a breakfast or a lunch um, with like some time to, yeah, like chit chat would be nice too. Um, and whether that would be built into the extra hours outside of the four hours used to more motivate towards like, yeah. So anyway, I would vote for like a breakfast or a lunch too. Um, So just so I'm Sorry. understanding, everybody's okay with November 3rd. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm okay. Okay. Yes. yes, if you all can get me those drafts, then we'll go ahead and send them out for next meeting and you all can decide on how long this is going to be. So, <laughs> we'll be so we, we didn't address the cultural events. Um, Liz, do you want to take that on? Sure. Great. Okay, so we're all set. I'm happy to help, especially with the bylaws, since I too feel like there are pieces in it. But um, any other, anybody else who wants to work with somebody else to prepare this? I'm say, seeing no, and I'm looking at the agenda. Um, we're up to public comment, and I don't see any public unless Camille wants to... I just have one thing to add for the cultural events um, in there. Um, the messaging for this year, I think is gonna be important to kind of message out as a town um, and town employee, we're trying to craft something that kind of messages, you know, we're in Latinx heritage months currently um, and it's going to end October um, 15th. And so if we, don't acknowledge why we didn't do something, you know, so people might be a little upset. And so in that regard, we are wondering, um, town staff, if you all would like to be a part of coming up with some type of crafting a message. If not, um, the DEI office was going to craft something to hopefully post on social media just to acknowledge that we are well aware we are not doing Latinx Heritage Month right now in hopes of having a larger event that is more equitable and brings more people from various cultures together later on in the year. Yeah, we're favoring a more multicultural market approach. That sounds really like a lot of fun to me. Anyway, um, I was gonna, all right. I think I was gonna ask about if we was anybody doing anything for Latino Latinx Heritage Month. And I know that last year they we did a small thing. Two years ago, we did a huge thing. And then last year we did something smaller and I'm not even sure if we did it. We, again, somebody else was doing something that we jumped on and supported. So um, I need to ask um, some of my Latinx friends if they have anything planned and hopefully let you know sooner. I actually try to do that tomorrow so um, I can see something at the retreat. On well, the 28th, there's salsa in the park happening. Um, and that is being um advertised as kind of a celebration it's not anything with the town i think the only thing is rec department is connected with salsa in the park throughout the year not just for latin mm -hmm. heritage month so i know that um some people are advertising that and that i forget the hours right now but it is on the 28th yeah. cool mm -hmm. try to get there so next agenda item is the next uh meeting date 
which is October 16th at 6 p.m. Uh, Correct. Are there any other topics? Yes, and this is for, uh, I think Camille already spoke to her department, but at the last meeting, I mentioned that um, Crest had four vacancies. We have three. Yes, three. Um, I do know that there was one young lady who agreed to be a part of the commission. She's not here yet, so I don't know where she is in her journey. But she talked to, I think, Philip and Pamela at the back to school event. Do you know who I'm talking about, Philip? I am drawing a blank right now. Okay, so her name is Marita Banda. Yes. Okay, so I know that um she was willing. Um, we're still trying to work on um, a young person because we usually have a high schooler on our commission and we're I'm trying to work on that. Um, and I also know that there is was four three positions in the CSSJC. So Philip, that question is, do you know about, I know Camille already updated us on Crest, but do you have any ideas about um, the Human Rights Commission and or um, CSSJC. Yep, so I know that um, there are meetings being scheduled right now. Um, have the co-chairs received any communication from the town manager's office in, in that no. regard? No, no, sir. So I will reach out to his office um, for the Human Rights Commission, but and also CSSJC is um, having some schedules right now happening. Uh, the individuals that you named, I, I'm not sure if um, they're on there. I know that I have personally reached out to um, her and also a high schooler. And so I cannot tell you who will get scheduled in that way, but I will definitely have um, his office email you to get you all on the agenda for interviews. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments? All right, it's 7.22 p.m. and the meeting of the Human Rights Commission is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Everyone. For Thanks, Camille, for coming. See you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank See you in October. Bye. Thank you.